She got too much energy. You need to sit down, slow down. No, I'm just kidding. You keep that energy. We all need that energy. You guys, I'm so blessed to be here, man. I have so many things that are happening in my life, and I'm praying that everything that I say today, that God will speak to each of you individually. Okay, I'm going to start off with something very important. This is something I think everybody needs to know because a lot of people go through life and they trip and they fall and they have no idea where they're going and they don't know why things happen to them. When I was born in 1983, my mom gave me a name and that name, the, my government name, not Harmony, my government name was Dominic Vincent Bonsignor. Okay? And... Later on in life, after I went through hell in a handbag, I learned a lot of things about my name. Your name means something. Your name has a meaning and it has a spiritual connotation. So God, Satan wants to wipe you out according to your name. Satan's not stupid. I, I, don't, I don't give Satan glory, but Satan's not dumb. He's been here since the beginning. And people go throughout life and they do what they do and blah, blah, blah. And they don't consider the fact that we all have an eternal soul and we can die and we can burn in hell forever, eternity. It, it's true. There's millions and millions and thousands and millions of people that are burning right now. It's real. But Satan wants to take us out. And he tried to take me out because he knew that when my mom named me Dominic Vincent Bonsignor, he was in trouble. He knew that God had a plan for my life. And so in his mind, he's like, I got to do everything I can to take him out. So 1983, I'm born. My name is Dominic. Dominic means belonging to the Lord. Come right on. off the bat. Come on. That's the, that's the immediately belonging to the Lord, Satan. That's right. The spiritual connotation for Dominic is faithful disciple. So Satan knew that whatever I was going to be a disciple of... I would be faithful to that. And if he could get me to be faithful to him, I would, if I, he could get me to, to, to follow him, I would be faithful to him. Okay? Number two, my middle name. My middle name is Vincent. And Vincent means conquering. Not conquer. Conquering. Con a continual, perpetual force of con conquering. I keep going. I keep going. Whatever direction I'm going, I'm going to keep going from faith to faith, glory to glory, no matter what it is. When I was following Satan back in the world, I was a little kid, but I, I, I got into drugs real bad. And when I followed that path, I was always the little kid and people could never figure this out. I would get to the drug dealers, drug dealers, drug dealers, drug dealer. I would always get to the person above, the person above, the person above. I was conquering. I was taking territory no matter where it was. And Satan knew that that was a part of my name. And the spiritual connotation for Vincent means strength through faith. Hmm. Bon senior, good man, good sir, good gentleman. Belonging to the Lord, faithful disciple. Conquering, strength through faith. Good man. That's what Satan had in 1983, okay? 1983, I'm born. We fast forward. Six years old. I'm standing in my living room and this dude and this lady comes into our home, which was in the projects. I was born in a single parent home, born with Tourette's syndrome. Okay, y'all want to talk about some bullying, we can go there. Tourette's syndrome, 1983. My dad bounced, he's gone. So now it's just my mom. My mom's raising two young boys, and my mom has Tourette's syndrome. She's on welfare, and she's on food stamps. We live in the projects. That was, I was born into a disadvantage automatically, but I had the power in my name. Okay, so we're going somewhere with this. Hang on, because this applies to your life. Five, six years old, I'm standing in the living room with my mom. I hear a knock at the door. Boom, 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 boom. A man and a lady comes in. And they're standing in the living room and this dude comes and he, op he, he switches out a switchblade and he says, I'm going to cut your effing throat if you don't give me my money. I'm going to kill you right here in front of your kid. Give me my effing money. I didn't know what the heck that was even about, but I was scared to death. I was only six years old and there was nobody in the house but me and my mom. And I knew that dude could start stabbing my mom if he wanted to. And so my mom tried to peacefully calm him down to get so they could go to the place where she needed to go because my mom sold weed. My mom sold marijuana. Okay. 
And so at that point, I, I witnessed that, and it tore me up inside. It made me afraid. Age seven, I'm coming out of my friend Jeremy's house. I'm going across the street at nighttime. It's, it's, it's raining outside. This dude's standing out in the rain. What happens next? He grabs me out from the, out from when I'm trying to walk across the street to go, to, to go home. He grabs me, drags me out 50 feet away from my buddy's back door. The kid that I just left, he slams me on the ground. He rips down my pants and he begins to molest me. Seven years old. Satan's trying to make me hate God from the get-go. God don't love me. Why would God, if God loved me, why would he allow something like that to happen to me? Fast forward. Now we're at age 10. Lost my virginity. Introduced to sex. Gone. Boom. Sex right there. 10 years old. Marijuana. Started smoking weed for myself. 10 years old. Drank my first alcoholic beverage called a Zima. Kind of tastes like 7-Up with alcohol. But nevertheless, I drank it. Sex, drugs, and alcohol. Age 10. That led into lying and cheating and stealing and grades in school just dropping like crazy. Boom. Age 13. Started dabbing in homosexuality. This dude messed with me when I was seven years old. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I had so much shame and so much guilt. Age 13, I started uh, uh, going into, into that lane into homosexuality. Didn't know what was what. Okay, then I start getting in major trouble big time. I'm starting to get hit by the cops. They're coming at me. I got the whole sheriff's department in Elmira looking for me because I'm threatening to kill people, busting in the house. We, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, oh man, the, the hospital people, man, they dragged me out, locked me in a psych ward because they thought I was crazy because I kept cutting up my arms. I still got all the scars on my arms because I used to cut my arms frantically and I'd take the razor blade and I'd, I'd scoop up my own blood and I'd fling it on the wall of our living room and I would write, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Just speaking to anybody that was in my life, I just, I hate you. I had so much anger as a kid. Fast forward a little bit more, now I'm going to jail and I'm getting locked in prison. And I was on the ankle bracelet for a year. I was on probation 12 times. I was shipped to the hospital. They kept sticking this tube down my throat because I kept overdosing on drugs and pills. And they pumped my stomach full of black, dark, uh, black charcoal to save my life. Age 20, I'm locked up again. Now I'm in jail. I'm calling my mom collect and my mom tells me I have lung cancer. Because my mom smoked. My mom smoked cigarettes. So now she's going to die. She said they, got, they gave me six months to a year to live. My mom died in two weeks. Okay? So now, now I have nothing. I really have nothing. My brother told my mom on her deathbed that he promised he would do the best that he could because he already knew how I was. I was not cool. But he said he would give me a chance. 20 years old, I'm, in, I'm in, uh, incarcerated. All this stuff happened before I was even 21. So I get out of there. My brother meets me at the gate. I go to live with him in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And while I was out there, God began to get a hold of me because I started messing up my life again. I started doing drugs, crack, cocaine, weed, mushrooms, meth. Uh, uh, I was doing heroin. I was snorting Oxycontin, smoking cigarettes. I was doing all that stuff. And it was making me crazy. And I got with a girl and I got her pregnant. And, and our relationship was just trash. And it was going to hell in a handbag. I didn't know what to do. So I got down on my knees and I began to cry out and I said, God, I need you, I need you, I need you right now, I need you. I need you to come and I need you to save me right now because if you don't, I'm gonna die. And if I die, I know I'm going to hell. I know I'm going to hell. I need you to save me. I need you to do it because I can't do it by myself. I know there's something inside of me that wants to do good, come on. but I don't know how to carry it out. I don't need to know how to bring that guy out of me. And I need you to do it and I need you to do it right now. Jesus. And if you don't do it and I, burn, and I die and I go to hell, it's not my fault this time. This time, it's your fault. Jesus. Because I have no hidden agenda. I'm not asking you, hey, do this for me and I'll do this. It's none of that. I need you to save me or I'm going to die and I'm going to go to hell. You need to do it. And in that moment, God descended into the room. He descended so much so that I remember I waved my hand in the, in the air because I could feel the thickness yes. of his presence. I could love If love was tangible, that's what was in the room. Come on. I could feel the resistance against my hand, and his presence came over me. It engulfed my whole body. It wrapped around my arms. It wrapped around my fingers, my face, my neck, and he just grabbed me and hugged me, and I began to wail. I began to wail crying because I knew for the first time ever in my whole life that God cared about me. Yes. 
and he <laughs> saved me. Okay, he yes, set me Jesus. free from that very moment. He set me free from the addiction of all those drugs that I dealt with for all those years. They were like tow truck chains chained to my arm. I just couldn't get forward no matter what. And all of a sudden it was boom, crack cocaine gone, boom, marijuana, boom, alcohol, boom, Come methamphetamines, on. boom, Come oxycontin. On. One after another, after another, in less than two months from May 05 to July 05, God put me in my right mind. Then the only thing that I had to offer God was music because when I was a little kid and I was doing drugs, I used to go to this dude's house who was my drug dealer and he was a, he was a cat that would always rap and everybody respected the rappers. They respected them. They walked in the room. Everybody respected them. They had money. They had respect. I wanted that so bad. So I used to go to their house and I'd sit at their feet just to listen to them rap. And I caught on and I wanted it so bad. So I began to rap. I began to try to do that. And so I got good at it. And then when I, and then when I got saved, I told God, I was like, God, that's the, literally the only thing I had. I've never had a job. I was raised on welfare and food stamps. I've never had a job. I've never done anything. I don't have anything to give you except music. But if you'll bless it, I'll use it for your glory. I'll stop cussing in my music. I'll stop talking about doing drugs. I'll stop talking about women. I'll stop talking about all that stuff, and I'll just give it to you. Come on. And God blessed it. He, he blessed it. I went to ministry school. When I was in the world, I got F's and F's and F's and D's and F's and D's. I went to ministry school. I graduated with 17 A's and two B's. Jesus, God said 17 Woo! A's and two B's. God radically changed my life. I began to give him music, and he began to open doors for me. One after another after another. We fast forward. Now we're at 2019. I'm wearing this outfit because I got hired earlier this year to write a song for Lawrence Fishburne's upcoming movie. Man. Hollywood movie. Yeah. Then I went out to Minnesota. Shout out to Winter State Entertainment, my peeps. I went out there, shot the music video, came back. Now they got me writing for another movie. Yes. And I get to go on tour with the Brothers Keeper Tour. I got an event coming up in Houston in front of 80,000 people. Come on. In Houston. Thank you, Jesus. Crazy stuff. I'm talking like, God, it don't matter what you think about yourself. Because I have failed so many times, so, but I get back up. Okay? Yes. Now, I, I feel bad because my mom's not alive. And I'm married. I have two kids. And my little daughter is two years old. If you saw her, you'd want to take her home. Huh? And put her in your little, your little princess box and lock the key. Because she's that cute. And her name is Teresa Bond Sr., which is my mom's name. Aww. And she reminds me of my mom every day. And uh, so, we, again, we've had so many awesome ministers come up here and talk. But this is real. We can, we can, let's be real. We can all walk up out of here and be like, man, that was cool. Got to eat a hot dog, got to do this. Go away and not be changed at all. That's right. Because change has to come from our heart. We have to be willing. Yeah. So are you smoking? Are you vaping? Do you want to stick around and see your kids grow up? Do you want to see your grandbabies run up to you like, grandma! <laughs> grandpa, that's my grandpa, y'all. It's real. It's real. It kills us. Now listen, this isn't judgment. This is just reality. How do I know? Because I saw my mom die the worst death I've ever seen a human being die. Okay? It was terrible. Cancer is a murderer. Many of us know people, okay? So no condemnation, no judgment. Just reality. If we need to pray, why not pray? Man. I mean, what, what is the harm in that? Give God the opportunity to change your heart. He did it for me. I'm not speaking because I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm speaking because God delivered me from eight drugs from May 05 to July 05. I'm talking things I was addicted to since I was a little boy. Okay, you want to smoke Newports three packs a day? That was me. You want to smoke weed constantly ounces and ounces a day? That was me. You want to smoke meth? That was me. Pop shrooms, take acid? That was me. Oxycontin, snorting? That was me. Been to jail, been to prison, been on probation. I already went through it. So now that God delivered me, why not join hands and pray? Wow. Try. I'm just saying. Now, I'm not going to take up everybody's time because I know we got other people that need to come up here. So I'm going to start this first track. Oh, I am going to say one thing. For all the artists that are here, we started a thing, and I would love for y'all to be a part of it. It's actually life-changing, and I would love for you to be a part of it. I was talking to Kim when she she drove. I drove her here. We rode together. She's super dope. You're super dope, dog. You're super dope. Got the hat and everything. She's amazing. We we in January we did a cruise, a Christian hip hop cruise. The ship sold out. We had five thousand people on the ship. We went to the Bahamas, 
And it was life changing. We got to we got to sit down with ministry leaders. We got to learn things in the music industry that's not common knowledge, things that can help you go from glory to glory, things that'll help increase your royalties and revenue, things that'll help you get more bookings, things that'll just dynamically change your life straight up. And uh, you can perform on the ship, you can perform in the Bahamas. If you've never performed out of the United States, then you are not an international recording artist. But if you go with us to the Bahamas and we let you perform downtown, you will then become an international recording artist. And that's pretty dope. And you will get magazine interviews, you'll get radio interviews, and you will be with a bunch of dope people that love Jesus for real. And you'll come back with so much footage and pictures and so full of the Holy Ghost, you're going to know what to do except for just not know what to do. That's all I can say. It's super dope. So we got another one coming up January 2020. It's off the chain. Uh, if you guys want to register, talk to me about that later. Let's talk about it. It's going to be super dope. We'd love to have you. So we're going to do this first track called Follow Me. And you should follow me only as I follow Christ. If I'm doing something that is not Christ-like, don't follow that. Don't do that. Just follow me as I follow Christ. Because he's the one that's going to save your soul, not me. Amen? Amen. Let's just be real. You can pop that track, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! I always love music, man. That's why my name is Harmony, because I love Harmony. The sound of voices, I can tell it's so good.
drink real quick. We're going to track two. I got three and then I'm going to go. Gibson, Mel Gibson's son, and Noel G. The upcoming movie called Brothers Keeper. It'll be hitting about 1,500 to 2,000 theaters across America later on this year. Just make sure you guys keep a lookout for them. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. I'm gonna take a drink. One more song. I'm out.
get back up all the stuff happened in my life is not because of my performance of how good I am or what I've done right it's all based on his goodness but I have to get in line with what God wants me to do because even if I fall along the way I can still get back up that's right I still have his grace I woke up today, I still have his mercy. Yes. I get to go home to my wife, I get to go home to my 13 year old son, I get to go home to my little Teresa Monsignor. I get to eat food and chips and dip while I'm playing Fortnite. Or something like that with my son, because he's a video game player. God just wants us to follow him. Yes. Let him take care of all the other stuff that's wrong in your life. It's the goodness of God towards us that yes. leads us to repentance. That's it's right. his strength that breaks the chains of addictions. Yeah. 
Mm. It's his power working through us that breaks the chains of addictions and strongholds in our life. If you can, if you think you can do it, go ahead. I tried for 12 years. I couldn't even budge this much. But one genuine heart, That's true right. felt encounter with God yes. busted the biggest chains off of my life. And now I'm right here. 2019 you, is the yeah. birthday. Shout out to Shannon. Hallelujah. Shout out to Kelsey and everybody yeah. else that's been here, all the artists and volunteers. Thank you guys for putting this together because this is making an impact. I love you guys. My name is Harmony. In Jesus' name, God bless you guys. Amen.